And Shabana Mahmood. Thank you, Mr. Um, Speaker. Can I um, add my voice to those of other members of this House by congratulating my right honourable friend, the member for Doncaster, and um, the uh, honourable member for Stratford on Avon for um, uh, um, securing this debate? Um, I agreed uh, with the entirety of my right honourable friend, the member for Doncaster, speech, and much of what the member for Stratford upon Avon said as well. I perhaps disagree with him in terms of his more fulsome praise for the actions of the government over the last uh, 24 or 40 years. <laughs> Hours, um, I would take issue with that, but I was very much moved by his own um, personal experiences and his personal reaction uh, to, this, uh, to this ban, and um, I, I commend uh, his speech and his efforts uh, on this matter. Um, I just want to add a couple of quick points uh, on my own uh, part, Mr uh, Speaker. In particular, I just want to return to a point that I made when the um, Foreign Secretary was taking questions in the statement earlier on, and that is the importance of recognising that this is a Muslim ban. I know other members of this House have made this uh, point as, as well, but I feel it's so important that we send a clear message that it is important to call this exactly what it is. We seem to be living in an era, Mr Speaker, where the truth and facts are challenged at every moment. And I was really struck <coughs> by um, the recent film. It's called Denial, and it's about the story of Professor Deborah Lipstadt, who had to take the Holocaust denier, David Irving, to court in order to prove the truth of the Holocaust. And it, it's, a, it's a, real, a real way to focus minds on how important it is to speak up for the truth and to acknowledge the truth and to call out the truth at every moment because that is what um, so many people are trying to divert us from by trying to say this is about nationality. It is not about nationality. The President of the United States made it very clear in his campaign he wanted to ban Muslims from entry into the United States. Rudy Giuliani was on Fox News, so not even one of those organisations that the President and others like to say uh, indulge in uh, false news or fake news. It was Fox News that Rudy Giuliani went on, and it is on Fox News that Rudy Giuliani said he was asked by the President of the United States to put together a commission to work out how to enact the Muslim ban legally. These people are not hiding in plain sight. They are telling us in clear words on national television broadcast around the world exactly what they believe, exactly what they stand for, and exactly who they are. I will give way very quickly to the Honourable Gentleman. I'm, I'm extremely grateful to the Honourable Lady. Um, will she also remember that in late July last year, during the Democratic National Convention, he was tacky enough to attack a Muslim gold star mother whose son had died in the service of the US Army protecting his fellow um, soldiers from a certain death for them. The, the well, Honourable Member you. makes such an important point and reminds us about uh, Humayun Khan, uh, and in normal circumstances that would have been enough, I think, for somebody to lose an election and to receive the opprobrium of everybody, everywhere. Um, it is a sign of what we have come to, perhaps, that it did not, but I'm grateful to him for reminding the House of that uh, particular case. I just feel it's so important that we stick to our principles on this and that we hold the line. We hold the line on the truth, because that is what is at stake here and everybody in this house must do so unafraid, unashamed and when they scream at us on social media and they try and say to us that this is not what um, we are being told it is, that the president suddenly changed his mind and now doesn't think this is a Muslim ban or they try and divert us and the alt-right go on the march as they are so famous now for doing, we have to hold the line, we have to hold on to the truth. Um, I, I won't just because of time, I do apologise. Um, I just want to make another point, Mr Speaker, about British values. You know, as a British Muslim parliamentarian, I have spoken a lot in this House about British values, and I have heard a lot from this government about British values. In fact, I've often felt uh, that this government feels that the British Muslim community in this country needs to do more to uphold uh, British values. We've heard those famous phrases, muscular liberalism, that we need to have strong and vocal support for our respect for democracy, for the 
the rule of law, for equality and tolerance for everybody and every group in our country, and that we as a community in this country have to step up to the plate and call out behaviours that don't match with our British values. And if we fail to do so, we have the threat of the prevent strategy as a community hanging over us. But forgive me, Mr Speaker, for thinking today, and as I watch the Prime Minister's limp, weak and shameful response yeah. to this Muslim ban, for thinking, do you know, I wonder if the British Government recognises that it should perhaps consider referring itself to its own prevent strategy for failing to provide that strong, vocal, muscularly liberal defence of our British values. And I am reminded, Mr Speaker, of the recent Casey review uh, into integration in our communities. And one of her findings and one of her recommendations held up by the Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government when she said to increase standards of leadership and integrity in public office by ensuring that British values such as respect for the rule of law, equality and tolerance are enshrined in the principles of public life and developing a new oath for holders of public office. I wonder how many members uh, of the government would feel that if they had taken such an oath that they had fulfilled the promise of that oath by calling out this behaviour on the part of, our, of the American president in the fulsome way that they should have done so. I feel that they have not, and in doing so, they have undermined the very case that they have been making themselves for our own values, and that is a real shame, Mr Speaker. I just want to make one final point about the personal impact uh, that this ban is having on Muslims around the world, but particularly on Muslims in our own country, British Muslim citizens. There are almost three million British Muslims uh, in this country, and as a British Muslim, Mr Speaker, I can tell you on my own behalf that in my family, my friends and my community, people feel terrified. They feel that this is a portent of what is to come and they fear what there is to come. We live in an age of supremacists, Mr Speaker. There are supremacists on the rise all around the world, whether they are the Muslim supremacists of ISIL or whether they are the white supremacists that think they've got their life stream with the new administration in the White House. Supremacists on the rise everywhere and we have a duty in this age of supremacists and their success to call them out, to stand up to them and say not on our watch, to provide the comfort and security to all of our minority communities that we will not let them down, we will not stand by, we will stand up and be counted. Yeah. Yeah.